Hi guys, nice bright sunny afternoon, another little repair project. This is a remote controlled candle. Uh, it's got an LED in there and it's got a very similar to the solar rocking circuit in there that makes the uh, flame rock around so the LED points up at it at an angle and it gives quite a good impression of a flickering flame but this one doesn't work and the reason it doesn't work is because the battery compartment the um, terminals are completely corroded I've put these batteries in there just to try and force it to work I think it's probably because that spring is corroded, that's corroded, that spring's corroded. This is, I think, real wax. And I very carefully worked my way around it already to release this battery compartment. I don't know if we can release the other end of it is right up inside there um, it would be nice to actually see the circuit board but I don't know if we can get to it and if we can get to it I don't know if we'll be able to get it back afterwards that doesn't want to move easily and I certainly can't get my hand up in there to get it out a fair bit of dust here that's because we have it sat in our um, open fire without the fire running um, and the dust comes down the chimney and drops inside if we could see right inside uh, let's see yeah you can see the copper coil there it is very similar to the solar rockers copper coil there pulsing circuit magnet on the end of this thing so it does actually make it move around but all i'm trying to do here is replace those contacts and see if we can get it working in fact before i do that i suppose what i ought to do is just try and rig up some clips and some wires to see that if it works directly connected onto those tags. I'll do that. All right, I've put those batteries in this container which is rigged up. So these two wires will have three volts on it. In fact, we could check that. Simulator. Uh, hang on. Two point eight. That's good enough, I think, just to check it works. in the bright sunlight here you're not going to see very much well the bad news is it's not those contacts causing a problem because I've got it directly wired now and it's still not switching on and off so we're gonna to have to try and get that bit out the top there I don't know how I'm gonna do that well, I gave it a push and it dropped out. It split the um, wax. But I would guess in theory, I could melt some more to go round there and seal it back in place. Which wouldn't look totally unnatural. It's actually hot glued in place. 
that there. Where are we? That is hot glue there. Whereas this is the um, wax. Anyway, if I connect power directly to the LED, uh, where are we? Get it the right way around. I think we can see clearly enough the LEDs coming on. So the LED is okay. This is the infrared sensor for the remote control. Right, so that's three volts onto there. And if we shine this on the sensor, nothing's happening. I would go and demonstrate it working on the other two candles that we've got, but my wife's chatting on the phone in there at the moment. Just a quick demonstration of how it should work. These are the two that are still working. Now, uh, looking here, it does look very discoloured. So I don't know if we've had water drip in there and cause a problem. But that does look... Uh, ...very corroded. So that's possible. We could have had water drip inside. Now, to get it apart, it looks like this plastic housing would split that way. I could just cut through that hot glue. I might be able to lever it off in one piece. big reveal. So that's our candle just sus suspended on a little bit of wire. I did actually make one of these. Uh, if I remember I'll put a link in the video description so you can see what I did. Oh that definitely looks like it's wet and horrible or got wet and horrible doesn't that? Yes that looks like that's what our problem is. That's the black blob. Controller chip. This looks like it's corroded away just here. I'll get a brush rather than poke it with a metal instrument, see if we can brush it. We don't want to damage the wires that go to the coil either. Right, what can we see? Well, we can see the black blob clearly now. We see a transistor there, resistor there, resistor there. Something looks pretty corroded just there. Might be another resistor, might be a capacitor. And then under here, it all looks pretty awful. I'm well, spraying all that oil on there or lubricant, has quite conveniently loosened the hot glue that was across there. 
So that's come off, so we can now see the terminations. I've cleaned between them, because they were... Um, there was corrosion between them, short circuiting them out. Whether that will make any difference now that I've cleaned that out of the way, or whether it's gone too far, I won't know till I've tried it. But I'm going to solder that little fine hair wire back in place there, because that's dropped off. Looks like that's corroded right through there as well, so I might try and refresh that one. And I'll solder the battery wires on and we'll give it a try. Right, the situation we're in, the original solder tag there, the copper plate on the surface, has completely corroded away. So what I'm going to do is scrape off some of the surface um, the green stuff and see if we can make contact there, get a solder joint on there with the wire because both of the wires have just completely corroded away there well I seriously think we're fighting a losing battle here you can see I've re-terminated the coil wires scraping the insulation back or what do we want to call the green stuff so we could actually make contact with the copper track underneath But I don't know what that one is. It looks like it's corroded. All these terminations look like they're corroded. I've just tried switching it on and nothing happens. And the LED ought to come on. And it's not. Right. I think I'm going to give up. I'm not having any luck at all. Doesn't matter what I do. I'm trying the remote. That's doing nothing. If I bypass everything. Hold it up so you can see it. And then the LED is working. But I can't, can't get it to switch on. So, much as I hate to uh, give up, I think I have to give up. Nice little coil I could use for a pulse motor or something. But the little infrared circuit. Some, something in there is not working. But the LED is fine. The coil is fine. So it's the electronics that's not working. I say the only external components. We've got resistor there. Resistor there. Little transistor there. And I think... That is a capacitor. And then the controller chip, the black blob that does the work, and that's an infrared sensor. That's an LED, and that's a coil. Right. I did say I was going to give up on this little um, LED candle thing. But I've been <laughs> fiddling with it. I've got it out of the bin. I've been toying around with it a little bit. Uh, directly connecting power to make sure the coil works. Uh, if I use this power on a pin... Oh, that's me just blowing. <laughs> right, hold it still. Now, if I touch this end of the coil, 
you can see we get a good kick. So that made me think, all right, we've got power from positive through the circuit board to however it goes through there, it ends up on that side of the coil. And then by me putting the negative on this side of the coil, it works. So the next thing in the circuit is that little resistor just there, which is marked 151, I think. Yeah, 151. If I go this side of that resistor, we're still kicking it. If I go the other side of the resistor, we don't. It doesn't move. All right, see if we can demonstrate this. Uh, off. Hold that across there. On. Working. Off. Off. On. On. Off. Off. On. On. Off. So, either that little resistor is faulty, or it's got corrosion under it and it's not making contact. So, it looks like the chip is sending the right signals to the coil. What we haven't got is any way of lighting the LED. I wonder which circuit does that. Well, that's interesting. I just tried measuring the resistance across the other resistor and it just fell off the board. So that one might be the same. Well, that didn't go well. Both those resistors I was looking at have both popped off the board and I cannot get solder to take on the uh, circuit board underneath the tags. Same as I couldn't get it to take up here where the original wires from the coil went. I had to come back and scratch the surface off the uh, surface resist or whatever they call it, the green stuff, so I could actually make contact with the coil. Well, those little resistors were exactly the same problem. Um, I've managed to scratch back a little bit and you can probably just see I've got some shiny solder on there and there and there, but I can't get the resistors themselves to take solder. So, a bit of a dead end. I could order some surface mount resistors or I could just go through and put um, normal great big resistors on there. But uh, it doesn't look good. I think this circuit board has had it, but we did at least see the um, flame, flickering flame flutter around and we do know that coil is a good coil thanks for watching if you want more information check down below in the video description if you like this video you might like this one up here and if you want to subscribe you can check out my channel over here up here is my latest video on my channel and down here is a video playlist associated with the video you've just watched thanks again for watching